Simple viruses mutate and change. We expect that to happen, and the coronavirus is no exception whatsoever. And in some respects, I'm actually quite reassured by these sorts of detections, because it shows us the system is working. What we're trying to do is establish a global radar screen, if you like, which looks for different forms of the virus popping up in different places. And if we can spotlight them and track them, we have some chance of being able to predict what the virus's next move might be and marrying up those genetic changes with how it behaves clinically, what happens when a person catches it. Now, some of the worrying features are that it does have some genetic changes in common with some of the other variants that have turned out to be more transmissible, a bit more slippery to our immune system. And for that reason, people are watching it. But again, the reassuring note is, A, we know to watch out for it, and B, it hasn't become enormously common across the world. There are other variants like Delta, for example, that continue to outpace it. And as long as that stays the case, then this will remain something we watch, but we don't worry about too much. Well, if it does uh, become known that it is more transmissible or, um, you know, the current vaccines can, won't be able to help it, how difficult would it be for drug companies to turn a vaccine around to address the variants that the current ones don't cover? Well, the good news is that at the moment, the vaccines we have, despite being made against the original, let's call it the classical parent strain of coronavirus that, that launched the pandemic about 18 months ago, the vaccines still work very well against all these different variants that we've got. They prevent severe disease about 95% of the time, which is outstanding. What they're perhaps less good at doing is stopping people actually getting symptomatic infection. And they're not the same thing. You can get trivial infection with coronavirus despite having been vaccinated, and about a third of people that might happen to them. But obviously it would be ideal and better for disease control if we could stop them altogether. And that's what researchers are working on now. They're trying to make what they're dubbing COVID vaccine 2.0. The idea is that we update the vaccines, tool them up as it were, either to more closely resemble what is now circulating in these dominant variants or add in additional features into the vaccines that give the immune system an extra helping hand so it makes a more robust response making it better able to fend off these variants. And actually, the really saving grace here is that the, the vaccine technology that we've got is quite agile. It's relatively easy to do this. What's not easy to do, though, is get those vaccines into arms, because that's always going to be the slow part of the process. And with 8 billion people on Earth and probably fewer than a billion people vaccinated so far, we have a very long way to go just to get initial doses of vaccines into people, let alone boosters, or updated forms of the vaccine. Well, I mean, it seems like we're in this never-ending cycle. We see what's happening right now in the United States. We're seeing new recommendations across the EU for travel there. Um, and not to mention, as you mentioned, low to no vaccines in other parts of the world. So are we just going to have to deal with this coronavirus for the years to come? I mean, are we ever going to see the end of it? Well, we agree that it's going to become what we call endemic. In other words, it will continue to circulate among the human race possibly indefinitely, but at least for some time to come. And therefore, we have to make a plan with that in mind. Now, one way that we want to, to solve this is to make sure everyone gets vaccinated, because what the vaccines do, even if they can't prevent all infections, they definitely can convert what would otherwise be a lethal infection for some people into a trivial infection for almost everyone. And that means that we have a really good chance of, of intervening about in the thing that people find the most worrying, which is getting severely unwell. But that does not belittle the and, and trivialize the fact that remains there are probably 7 billion people on Earth who need those vaccines, and it's going to take a long while for us to get to them. As Melinda Gates of the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation said, if there's COVID anywhere, there's COVID everywhere, essentially. Remember, this whole thing started from one a uh, small outbreak in one city, in one country, in one corner of the world, and it's eclipsed the entire planet, and it's going to take a while to sort this out.